So before going to my own talk, uh, let me just tell you. My talk is about, is about inclusion and exclusion. And by an amazing con a coincidence, uh, today over breakfast, I looked at the crossword puzzle of the New York Times. And usually I only do them, do them in the evening and uh, not in the morning, uh, but sometimes I get a head start. And I saw uh, one of the clues was uh, Avenue, but E V E A I A V E. So A V E dot meaning abbreviation for Avenue. So in the convention of crossword puzzles, whenever uh, whenever the clue has an abbreviation, for example A V E period instead of Avenue, it means that the answer also is a, an abbreviation. So it was an avenue between third and park between South Avenue and Park Avenue. And since I go to New York quite a bit, uh, I knew right away it's Lexington, Lexic, Lex, Lexington Avenue. So the answer was L-E-X, period. Of course, you don't write the period in the crossword puzzle, so it's L-E-X. And then I looked at the down clue, not the cross, but the down clue, and guess what? What there was a clue? Not included. And the answer was excluded. So I found it really a good omen that in the morning crossword puzzle, today's crossword puzzle of the New York Times, uh, the two keywords of my talk, inclusion, exclusion, showed up. Uh, so I find it a good warm omen. Also, uh, I'd like to start with a warm up. So you still see the maple screen? So I was really. Uh, please, uh, Richard Stanley's talk has a lot of interesting things. But one thing that he mentioned uh, a little bit in passing was the following sequence. And this is related to my talk later on. So everything is related. The number of permutations. Such that I of I plus one. Uh, by the way, I really encourage you uh, to put on your video is never one. In other words, avoiding the one, two, you cannot have one, two, you cannot have, and this is the classical easy exercise in inclusion and exclusion. And a left to you as an exercise. So you have here n minus one events. We have permutation. The total number of permutations uh, is well known since 1321, where the rabbi Levi Ben Gerson uh, proved rigorously that there are n factorial, one times two times three uh, times four da, 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 times n permutations of length n. But if you add conditions, uh, it's much more difficult. So the first famous conditions was, uh, came from Euler probably, the number of derangements, or, uh, or maybe uh, somebody else in France, uh, the problème de rencontre. Uh, so it's a classical uh, probability or combinatorics 101 problem to use a principle of inclusion, exclusion, to find the number of derangements. Uh, so this is more difficult, but in this case, the derangement really uses the two line notation of permutations. So here, when you look at the one, it's also, N, uh, so in the case of derangements are N forbidden things. You cannot have pi one minus one to be zero or pi of two equal to two. So N restriction, N, uh, I call it sins or crimes. And then you can use inclusion and exclusion uh, from probability 101 or a uh, commentary 101. Uh, to get the beautiful classical formula, uh, the alternating sum of sigma k goes from zero to n uh, minus one to the power k uh, times n to k times m k factor. But this is a little bit different. This is a one line notation. So now we have n minus one. When the similar including exclusion arguments uh, will give you, and then you use the famous amazing uh, Zalberger algorithm to get the following recurrence. If f of n is, so that's a challenge for you, uh, uh, 
is the number, if let L of n be that number, the number of permutations of length n, such that you never have one, two next to each other, uh, two followed by one, uh, two, uh, three followed by two, etc. cetera. Uh, it's a very, very simple recurrence. Uh, now uh, it is, and this follows from the Zalberg algorithm, or in this case, you don't really need it. It's very, very similar to the famous recurrence for the arrangement numbers, and it's closely related. So the question, how to prove this recurrence without including occlusion and without using the Zalberger algorithm to find the recurrence? A nice direct combinatorial proof. Can anybody suggest? Please unmute yourself and tell me if you have any ideas. Please don't be shy. I, I don't see it because I send the screen. I don't know how to see the people. Any suggestions? In transposition one, anywhere. Yes. Unless right. the right side, I mean, number greater than one. Uh, that means not two. Yeah, that's probably right. They, they're probably right. So, so here's the, the argument. Uh, uh, you use uh, uh, you use a positive approach, not including inclusion. So, uh, see if you delete, if you uh, you look at how to construct such a creature uh, from of size m minus one, and so uh, remember when you make permutations, you can insert n in n places, first, second, and so on. So that's why you have the famous recurrence uh, of Levy Bengelson that. Uh, S of n. But really, a take of this is so you have a legal permutation obeying the conditions. So, how do you get a one with a certain n? Of course, you can insert n everywhere except after n minus one. So, instead of having n options, you have n minus one options. Let's account for this. But there is another way of getting these things. You look at the illegal permutation in which i follows i plus one. So you look at something that is almost legal, has no things, but you have one violation that i uh, i plus one follows i. And if you insert n in it, then you have a, a legal new permutation. So uh, if you now condense i and i plus one, you get a permutation of length m minus two. And there are m minus two ways uh, of uh, doing it, QED. So this is fairly simple. But here is, uh, let me stop sharing this and give you the first challenge before I start my talk. So the challenge is using that is algorithm for a more complicated recurrence. And this is already a paper that quite a few very, very smart people, uh, if you replace this condition by absolute value, this is related to my talk later on. So it's a taste of drastic absolute value here. So now we are building uh, twice as many conditions. Also, you don't want uh, one followed by two, etc. Now we have a certain false order recurrence, and I have no clue how to find a commercial proof. So let me stop sharing this for a second, and let me now share the challenge. Uh, Tufik, do you see a web page? The first? Yes, yes, I see. Yes. Okay. The first 25 terms, so this is easy, the, the program I hope I have time to talk about later on, is this. So you can go to RIS and find out, uh, you can copy and paste it, not now, and find out that there is a big literature, including my good friend, the late Dave Robbins. He wrote a beautiful monthly problem. And uh, John Riordan, uh, it really uh, came from chess. Uh, everybody knows about non-attacking queens. This is a very difficult problem. Probably we never know the exact number of placing 1,000 non-attacking queens on a 1,000 by 1,000 chessboard. 
but the analogous problem for King is not so hard, but Mont trivial is all, and that's exactly a, a, a equivalent, equivalent, I think, to the problem of non-attacking kings. Uh, so in this case, the difference in absolute value between two consecutive entries of the permutation should not be one. And here, uh, using uh, the rigorous but indirect things, I lost found a recurrence of order four, namely a of m plus four plus a minus blah, blah, blah. So this is the challenge for you. I have no clue. And I'm offering $50 donation to the OIS to the first prover of a nice, or not even not nice, but the direct commercial proof of this. If possible, bijective. So you move everything with a minus sign to one side, everything with a plus sign. So you have a direct, you have a direct sum of some Cartesian products uh, and have it. But also commercial proof also. So this is the warm up challenge for you before I go to my talk proper. So, so now I start my talk proper. There was the introduction. Thank you, Tufik, and the great team for organizing such a great conference. Oh, what a pleasure. Okay. So here's the conference. It's a really, really great conference. So uh, I'm gonna. So today we are in the second day. Today we are in talk number one. Doron uh, Zabago. So let me first talk with the abstract because I know I will talk about the two principles of inclusion exclusion. One good, the mathematical one, still useful after all these years, and one bad, the sociological one, where a certain subset of mathematicians includes those with similar interest and method, excludes those with different interests and methods. And this is not such a good principle. Then again, you never know, maybe it is good uh, sociology. So first I need to get to think. Uh, before going on, uh, uh, let me just advertise a great journal. Uh, Professor Stanley already mentioned, uh, Richard already mentioned what a great journal it is. Really, really innovative. and. And they, they have a great editorial board and great issues and a very innovative, fascinating feature, the interviews of a very, very diverse uh, things. For example, with Peter Powler, who gonna speak after me. Uh, Peter, are you here? Yes, I'm, I'm here. Hi, Peter. Hi, Peter. Uh, by the way, uh, I don't wanna be uh, too pushy uh, or... Uh, a road. Uh, have you been? I didn't see you yesterday. Did you come yesterday? No, no, I could not because I was returning from vacation. Okay, okay, excuse. So uh, you have to promise to, after uh, it's recorded, uh, to watch the talks of uh, Richard Marley, uh, Adam, uh, Yuval, and uh, Elias. You have to promise, okay? Okay. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to your talk. However, uh, Peter <laughs> Paul gave a great interview. I know who is not here because he's conflicting uh, too bad the, uh, the conflict. Uh, Helmut, uh, are you here, Helmut? Okay, anyway, uh, and Andre, and uh, many, many others, uh, including Richard Stanley, uh, Knuth, uh, Lauren Williams, and many, many others. Mm -hmm. the journal, uh, I had a very big experience, I won't go over it, uh, with the electronic journal Alco that they rejected a very great masterpiece of mine and I gave a talk about it, so I won't go over it. So uh, Alco, I really don't like, uh, it's too exclusive uh, and too fancy uh, and it's algebraic commentoics in the best sense of the world. If you look at the titles, it's really, really fancy and pretentious. So once Emmanuel Kaus and I uh, submitted a solicited paper for a special issue for good and injection that was really deep and original in our opinion, it was rejected, desk rejected, uh, that by looking at the keywords. So I really, really uh, I don't like them anymore. But uh, you feel through this. But Jaco, the, the alcohol came from Jaco, now is much better than it used to be. Now, and I really recommend uh, not to pay attention mm -hmm. 
to the people. We don't who see your screen. Uh, we don't see your screen now. You don't see? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, I see, I see. Is that cool? Oh, I see, I see a problem. I mean, I, I put on the link and you don't see the screen. I have to, okay, I get it. Also, I think we should share screen. Uh, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Sorry. Never mind, that's not a problem. So I will tell you, Zako is on life as very common topics that uh, used to be founded and now it's under new management by Elias Cotillas. It's even a better journal now. And I argue too. So the bad principle of inclusion, exclusion. Uh, it's inspired by a quote of Dil Kalai. You see the web page right now? Uh, still, we don't see the uh, your screen. Are you not seeing the screen? Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Okay, now you see the web page? Yes, now I think let's see. Okay. So this is inspired by a great quote of the title of Gil Kalai. Do you see the ones are because collection of quotes? Yes. Okay, great, great. Sorry. I, uh, somehow. So do control F. So this is the inspiration. I have a collection of quotes to the title. Like musicians, uh, I want people to participate. A participate again. You're not here, are you? Okay. So, uh, so who uh, can I uh, uh, call on? Uh, Elias, are you here? Are you here, Elias? Yes. Elias? Doron. Yes, Doron, I'm here. Okay. Uh, can you read this quote? Uh, like okay. musicians. Like musicians, we can read and write complicated scores in a world without sounds. For us, mathematics is a source of delight excitement and even controversy, which are hard to share with non-mathematicians. In our small microcosmos, we should ever seek to write the right balance between competition and solidarity, criticism and empathy, exclusion and inclusion. Very good. So this is the source. So of course, some exclusion is necessary, I admit. If you include everybody, uh, then it's not. But I think it's better to err on the side of inclusion than exclusion. That's why I don't like journals like Alco who try to be quote unquote exclusive and reject papers just by looking quick at the keywords. And if it doesn't have Kasdan Lucy, Grotendieck, uh, and even true positivity, if it has a title that a, a common person can understand, uh, then they just reject it because it's not deep or. Uh, a deep or original according to what anyway so this was so you see now you see this yes uh, okay so now uh, i go uh, 17 years ago i already predicted about algebraic chromatoics so don't get me wrong some of the algebraic chromatoics is really really good it's really really fruitful it's a great extension of classical animative chromatoics and it gave lots of insight. Uh, it's really, really good. Uh, but uh, sometimes people it carried it too far. And sometimes uh, because they got so excited uh, about the recognition by the so-called mainstream, they started to exclude more concrete enumer enumerative. That's why it's really nice that enumer enumerative commentoics uh, per se is also a uh, Recognize and the journal of topic is a step in the right direction. Anyway, so this is an opinion I wrote, I wrote a long time ago. It's uh, inspired by a great talk by the great guru uh, Giancarlo Rota, uh, one of my greatest heroes, maybe my greatest hero. He gave a talk in the Garcia conference uh, in which it was like a fairy tale, the ugly duckling of Enumerative commentoics uh, became uh, uh, became a beautiful swan uh, called algebraic commentoics. Uh, but I warn here against uh, uh, against uh, forgetting your roots. Uh, so don't be too simplified. Uh, uh, and then 
no guns fear came true. Our auditorial bodies where Alcor rejected the case paper, uh, just like this. Uh, uh, you, you see, uh, you, uh, uh, you see, Elias, do you see? Uh, uh, okay, uh, okay. So, an initial review of the submission, counting standard young, blah, 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 blah. Uh, it's not, it's unlikely to reach uh, the levels of standards of depth or, or, and originality that the biocometrics is uh, seeking. So that's rejecting it uh, because they don't want to waste time. So I was very disappointed. This is a great paper and that it shows what I was afraid of 17 years ago, how I revived my toys, it got too snally. And so I'm really disappointed with this. Okay, so I, I skip this. So this was uh, my rebuttal. So let me briefly tell you what's about. And this was really, I was very, very happy that the same methodology was very useful in the recent uh, project with my graduate student, George Spahn, uh, that recently got published in the amazing journal of enumerative uh, commentaries, uh, which I hope to talk about in the remaining of the talk. So let me just tell you the referee report. In this paper, the author describes a program that computes the rational generating function for the tilings of rectangles of a given fixed height k and of varying length n. A finite list of usable tiles is given as input, so it's very, very general. You have an arbitrary set of tiles. So K is numeric. So you're having a rectangular board, a K by N. And the program builds on its own completely. So the referee realizes a system of linear equations. So the computer does the research. So the referee was aware about the novelty of the computer generated mathematics. Traditionally, the human uh, did the reasoning. So it's basically using a uh, commentary reasoning to find a structure theorem. And then uh, at the end of the day, sometimes you program the scheme or system uh, into a computer and, and crank out numbers. But in this case, the computer is everything on its own. A system with an equation of which one of the component of the solution is the required generating function. So we want to kind count the number of tilings. The classical problem is a very famous uh, Daimler problem. It came up in statistical physics. Uh, you have a rectangular or square board, and you have domino pieces, vertical and horizontal, and famously Castellan and, uh, and Temperley and Lieb found a closed form formula. Uh, by the way, if you also in, allow monomers, it's wide open. So for a rect square board n by n, it's probably intractable. But it's still interesting, and then you can also use numerics later on uh, to have a fixed width k, possibly big uh, with today's computer, and symbolic n, arbitrary n. And now is what the referee says. While it is very useful and quite difficult to have a program that can enumerate tilings, as it also has done this. This manuscript is a rather sketchy description of a computer program and does not seem to contain any original mathematics. And this got me so mad. Doing such a program is mathematics. I, mathematics my food. Algorithm is mathematics. Interesting, more interesting and more challenging. So I'm really disappointed at Helen Barcelo. Uh, I still, still don't talk to her. Uh, I don't know where she is now. Uh, and I've, I talked to Mary Elvis Camillo, but I'm also disappointed that she did not intervene. I gave them 24 hours uh, to change their mind and they refused. So I'm very disappointed. And to my great, so this methodology it turned out to be uh, later on. Uh, so uh, when we used it combined with inclusion, exclusion. Uh, speaking of inclusion exclusion, uh, it has a, a reputation of not being very deep. But there's another word for it. If you want to get a Fields Medal, uh, don't call it inclusion exclusion. Call it sieve. Uh, the recent Fields Medal uh, by James uh, Maynard essentially used inclusion exclusion. But they call it the sieve method. 
and people who try to be fancy, they don't use inclusion inclusion, they use sieve. For example, the title uh, cyclic sieving, because sieving has a, a more respectable, uh, prestigious sound to it. Anyway, but I like inclusion inclusion. So, uh, uh, so a uh, quick review of uh, uh, Pi. Uh, so this is a paper I wrote uh, uh, a few years ago. Uh, a perfect you see the paper, automatic enumeration of generalized main last numbers. Yes, maybe large oh. a little bit, zoom it. Yes, Can you it, see? It, okay. it's better now. So this was uh, dedicated to a uh, a Lendler school, another hero of mine. So, uh, including a children really uses a uh, zero x with one plus minus one. Uh, and the other deep theorem, a uh, deep fact, is zero to the power zero is one, zero to the power i is zero. And when you want to count uh, uh, all the guys, uh, uh, then it's very easy usually. But to, uh, to count the good guys, with the sum is always the good guys. It's usually very hard. So you do a trick. You write it G, the number of good guys, is the sum of a zero to the power, the number of elements of the number of things, the bad things that do do. And and then you use zero as one plus minus one, you do this, and da, 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 you get the famous inclusion inclusion. So the traditional way in which it was used, for example, for a uh, derangement. And and for uh, for minus numbers, as this was this paper was look at a specific set of things uh, and and count it. And sometimes it's zero. Sometimes you have a closed form, and then you have a formula, and sometimes complicated. So this is a traditional way. But uh, and another classical application is Kaplansky's. A masterpiece. It, uh, a, a mark. Do you see the paper solutions of the problem? The yeah. Mark. It's a full screen, Doron. I can see it. Yeah. You don't see the screen. We can see it, but it's very small. So it, oh, it's very small. Yeah. You see it now. It's better. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So I, I don't have time to go over it. So. It was one of the first non-trivial applications of inclusion and exclusion. In which, in which case, uh, it's not like the arrangement that pi of i minus i can never be zero. So pi of i minus i can never be zero or one. So in this case, it's more complicated, but it's very elegant. And you have a nice closed form formula for this number. And for this, you can get a recurrent. But uh, the, the novelty in this uh, uh, that's a recent uh, uh, so uh, do you see automatic counting of generalized latin rectangles and trapezoids yes okay so this is really a extension of the seminal paper uh, approach but he only uses theoretically of ira gessel uh, Ira Gessel, a long time ago. Ira, are you here, by the way? I saw you yesterday. Do you come to my talk, Ira? Ira Gessel? Tufik, is Ira here? I don't see him. Okay, so he didn't show up. Anyway, even though he didn't show up, he did a very nice paper. Uh, he proved that for any fixed with K, the number of Latin rectangles, reminding you, a Latin rectangle is a K by N Latin rectangle is an array, a, a matrix K by N matrix in which every row is a permutation, but every column uh, has no repetitions. So, so this is a, a, a Latin. So I'm willing to bet that nobody will ever know the total number of 1,000 by 1,000 Latin squares. So there's some upper bounds and lower bounds, very weak. So that's completely intractable uh, to find the exact number 
even asymptotic is wide open, but this may be possible one day. But uh, the number of 1,000 by 1,000, that's intractable. So you do what you can. You restrict the width. So the number of one, one by n Latin rectangles is easy, it's n factorial. The number of two by n Latin rectangles is not so hard uh, if you make the bottom line, bottom row, one, two up to n, uh, then it's really the arrangements. And then you multiply by n factorial. Things starting to get complicated for three by n, and Ara Gessler gave a beautiful generating function, uh, and it's already non-trivial for the number of three by n. For which you can easily get the recurrence and compute the first 10,000 terms, even the first 100,000 terms. But things get more complicated. For four by n, it gets extremely complicated. But theoretically, you can have basically use inclusion and exclusion. So now the underlining set, the universal set, is a set of k by n matrices in which every row is a permutation. So the universal set of all objects is n factorial to the power k. But now you have some forbidden things. You can have no repetition. So for example, a sub one one and a sub three one cannot be the same. So for any fixed k, you have quite a few restrictions, bad events, but still finitely many. So you can use inclusion exclusion. And this is essentially, a, you can use tiling. So each of these violations, which are all vertical, so, you, so it's not a consecutive tile. So for example, the violation that's the one, one entry and the three comma one entry of a dead matter, uh, the five comma one entry and the five comma three entry are the same. Uh, it's really a tiling. Uh, so you look uh, and all the tiles are vertical. So then you can use the rejected paper that I wrote in 2006 to automatically uh, find the weighted generating function of tilings and then you use. So uh, Aragessa didn't impl implement it. Uh, for him, it was completely theoretical. So he says there exists a rational function with many variables for all the so-called, what I call tiles, uh, which are all the restrictions. In the case of three by n, only five, uh, five of them. Uh, uh, row one equal row two, row one equal row three, and then uh, you have uh, all of them equal. So it's really five restrictions. So you have, and this is still tractable on the computer. So uh, if you look at the rational function, the weight the numerator, you have a rational function of uh, uh, in the variable z that takes care of n, uh, and the coefficient is uh, this. And then uh, today you can use a a, a Zalbergo a algorithm or extended extent of this to actually for, for k equals three and even k equals four probably to explicitly find a, a recurrence, a, a linear recurrence equation, what's called definite or recursive, a linear recurrence equation. Uh, so, but uh, that by this theoretical argument, uh, he proved that there exists a recurrence since we know for sure that there exists a linear recurrence equation with polynomial coefficients, we can quote unquote cheat, but it's rigorous cheating because we know a priori, thanks to Ira Gessel, that it exists. And then we can use the today's computers uh, and dynamical program to numerically find the first 200 terms or first 300 terms. Uh, and then you have enough uh, data to guess, and then it can be made fully rigorous if you have a priori upper bounds for the, that you could do for the order of the recurrence in a degree and use elementary linear algebra uh, to justify it. Unfortunately, 
for six by n, I, I think it's beyond the scope of even today's computer. So anyway, what we did here was more generalized. Uh, it was not just generalized setting rectangles. We have restrictions that could also be diagonals. Uh, oops. And, and this is inspired. Let me go back and show. By going back to the New York Times, a puzzle that appeared in the New York Times magazine a two or three years ago. Okay, do you see the metal screen, a mark, automatic counting of generalized Latin I can see the text um, written there. It's just a title and your names. Yeah. Okay, that's the paper. Okay, so it was inspired by a kind of puzzles uh, that appeared in the New York Times. And my students those wrote the beautiful app. So it's called Magic Triangle. Uh, do you see Magic Triangle? Uh, yes. A topic? Yes. Do you see the screen said Magic Triangle? Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, so there were kind in the New York Times magazine. Uh, it appeared uh, every Sunday for a few for a few months, I think. So basically, uh, you have what I call a Latin rectangle. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, triangle, a Latin triangle. So now you have to put a little bit like Sudoku, uh, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, and on the side of the equilateral triangle, in this case, it's of size five. And then every diagonal also has to be. So this is a little bit like counting letting squares but that in right angles. So it turns out if you restrict it, uh, you do one, two, three, four, five, you can by brute force find all of them. There are only four of them up to where the bottom is one, two, three, four, five. So if you multiply uh, by five factorial, uh, you only get 400 something. So you can do by brute force, look at all of them. And then the condition is that you have to fit the numbers a one, two, three, four, five, such as every side uh, and no repetition. And uh, and then you have clues. So the brute force is to generate all of them, about 480. And then by brute force, find out which of them. And of course, it has to be a new solution. But anyway, it's a, it's fun to do. You're welcome to do it, not now. And now I do solve solution. So here's an example of it. Once again, I'm offering a, a thousand dollar to AIS if somebody will rigorously find the exact number of size uh, 10,000 or even uh, 1,000. So it's even harder than counting Latin squares, Latin right angles. But you have more restrictions, uh, you have horizontal restrictions, and instead of having only one kind of vertical restrictions, you have two kinds of diagonal restrictions. So this is completely intractable, uh, but if you restrict it, like I guess it is for three by N, uh, you have trapezoids, you have Latin trapezoids. And in the great paper I wrote with George, uh, we actually found the first 100 terms uh, of this sequence uh, of Latin trapezoids. Well, you have n at the bottom, n minus one in the second row, n minus two at the third row, and you have uh, this. And the idea was inclusion, exclusion, combined with tiling. So once again, now you have many more. So let me now go back and do a quick, quick uh, demo and then a quick. Uh, stop sharing. Uh, I'm almost done. Uh, uh, uh. You see the metal screen? Yes. Okay, so uh, let me just give you. Uh,
never mind, uh, never mind, time is up. Uh, one of my principles. So later on, uh, when I uh, write it up, uh, you can look at this. Okay, thanks so much for a great uh, conference. I'm looking forward to the remaining talk. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you, Doran, for this interesting talk. Uh, any questions, comments, please? Doron, you're talking about inclusion, diffusion. What about Q analog? Why, uh, uh, what? Q analog. Oh, Q analog. That's a very good question. Also, a very, very good question. Uh, Q analog be a very, very good question. And also, T analog. Uh, what's nice about inclusion and exclusion, if you replace a, a minus one to the power blah, 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 by T minus one to the blah, 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 you have much more information. For example, in the famous inclusion exclusion formula for the number of derailments, sigma k goes from zero to n of minus one to the power k, n to k times n minus a k factorial, if you replace it minus one to the power k by t minus one to the power k, then you get uh, the, the coefficient of t to the power zero is all things. The coefficient of t to the power one uh, is how many have exactly one violation. Uh, the coefficient of t to the power two, how many, and so on. So it gives you more information. So you can, all the software can be completely adapted to have the much more general of, of uh, information of objects that uh, have not only no, uh, no crimes, but they have uh, a certain number of crimes. A very good question. Sure. That's completely extendable. Thank you. Uh, any other questions, comments? So uh, recently there was a, a physics paper related to quantum computing and these Latin squares. Uh, I, I don't know the topic very well, so I want to share something with you. Maybe you have seen this. About a, a quantum computing and what? Yeah. Uh, do you see the screen? Yes. Uh, so this was published in Quantum Magazine. So it says... Uh, oh yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it's related, but it's not directly related. Uh, this is okay. uh, la uh, Latin Greco squares, uh, and this is really a uh, uh, design. And, and Are you this physics paper, I, I, I think it was published in Physics Review Letters uh, very recently. Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting, but not directly related to, because this, this is orthogonal Latin square, meaning you have two Latin squares, and uh, they cannot, and famously. Uh, 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 what was uh, Lam uh, use the computer while the pounding things? Okay. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. It's very interesting. Uh, <coughs> any other questions, comments, please? Uh, do we have anything in the chat window? Uh, Mark, do you see? No, not nothing. Nothing. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, but by the way, I just look at the participants, and most of them, unfortunately, are still. Uh, not. So that's a very frustrating thing. Also, about teaching, you don't know if people pay attention. Uh, and as I saw, I guess it here. Ira, you just came up, or you didn't pay attention when I called you. So I write here, but he didn't respond. So maybe he just logged on. Okay, whatever. Or maybe he logged on. Doesn't matter. Okay, you can end it now. Here we have some. Okay, time. thank you again, Doron.